Hey, you guys have to excuse me. I feel a little under the weather, but um, uh, yesterday at 9 o'clock last night, I ended up getting my appendix out. It wasn't something I planned for. It was an emergency, and uh, we had to shoot videos today, so Gunner was nice enough to come over and uh, film a little bit later in the day, but uh, we're not shooting as many today as we thought, and Gunner's coming back on Wednesday, right, Gunner? Yep. Yeah, so I appreciate it. But uh, so we're just going to get a couple done today and I hope you guys can still take a lot out of this one because this one's really important. There are a lot of you out there right now that have wanted to plant food pots either for the first time this year or you're like me in the past. I can think, I think it was about 2000, maybe eight, nine around there where just life got in the way and I missed some springs, missed some opportunity to take care of the fields. We're seven hours away from the UP of Michigan down to uh, Wisconsin to plant plots. And uh, I just couldn't get them in. And so we had to make do. And even though you've missed some steps, even though you haven't tilled this year, even though you haven't sprayed yet, there's still a lot of things you can get done based on the timing that you're watching this. So even up to late September, there's things that you can do uh, to get a food plot in. So we're gonna talk about those and kind of go over some of those basics. We'll talk about those different, uh, different practices, different plantings. And you might be able to take one and push it back a little bit or actually plant one at different times and still get good results depending on your soil and your weeds right now. So let's kind of dive right into this and I uh, really want to see you guys have some great plots this year. There was no, there's no reason to not have good plots. You still have time and I believe you have time all the way up to the end of September depending on what practices you take and, and make. So number one though, you have to eliminate weeds. and now I'll say this up until like late September. For example, uh, weeds are dying at that time. There's still a lot of weeds in the, in the ground. So even though there's dead weeds, they've gone to seed, there's a lot of seed in the ground. So even at the end of the, the year, really late September, even through early October, and I'm saying uh, late September in really extreme Northern areas, whether it's Northern uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP and Michigan, upstate New York, maybe Northern Vermont, New Hampshire, you can still get great plots growing end of September, just simply by working up the soil and getting the soil exposed and then throwing annual rye is your best bet, rye grains, not rye grass or winter wheat and getting that on the ground, getting it packed into the soil and doing it at a very high rate. This makes sense, you know, earlier in the year, you're planting and you're, you're looking at one blade every few inches of growth and it's going to get a little bit taller but when you plant later september i'm really excited to introduce to you our new food plot seed company and seed company in general but whs wildlife blends these are our first two mixes the big boost brassica and the fall green blend and those are my personal mixes you know i've been experimenting with mixes and food plot mixes since 1998 so this is the 25th season and a lot of those have a lot of roots back into buckwheat peas tilled radish and all kinds of brassica blend even mixing with brassica with clover back in the day in 98 99 and so these are the culmination of all those mixes and all those experimenting throughout all the days and uh, and also all the strategies that we bring to you about food pots here. So the supply is limited. We're just doing this as a first time run this year and um, they're going really well. The sales are really going fast. So I appreciate you guys checking it out. It's on our website, in our store and uh, really appreciate you taking a chance on us and, uh, and really planting and, and buying these and planting these mixes that are my own personal favorites that you can put in the ground on your hunting land this fall. You want to fill these gaps so that you get a lower lush crop. You're not harvesting a seed head, so you need to fill space horizontally, not vertically. You're not looking at volume and mass taking place in several inches. You're looking at volume and mass taking place over a shorter amount of growth and filling that entire space horizontally. So you still have a hard time seeing the ground. And that's why at that time you're looking at 300 pounds per acre. When you get down into, say, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, even northern West Virginia, Kentucky, over into Missouri, possibly Kansas, when you look at some of those states, Tennessee, Louisiana, you could even plant in some of those states, Louisiana, um, and think of Alabama, 
maybe even South Carolina, you get into some of those areas, you could plant as late as mid-October. And third week of October, still you're looking at that 300 pounds per acre. And even in those southern states, you can get away with oats because you're not going to get that frost, that killing frost. And so oats are very palatable. And a lot of times up in the north where I've planted a lot of oats in the UP and Michigan, they turn brown in November sometime. And so for the rest of the season and all the way to spring, they were useless. And so I, I stopped planting a lot of oats. I used to plant 80, 20 oats to rye, then 50, 50. And then went the other way where I just had a little bit of oats in there and finally I got them out, got rid of them all together because I didn't have anything green. So I really like staying more towards the green grains, um, being wheat or rye to the north and then oats to the south because they're more palatable, a lot of times more attractive. But you have to look at that balance. But bottom line is you can get it done even planting as late as late September. But you have to eliminate weeds. And so that's a big concern. When you get into that time, you can't eliminate weeds. So you're just planting and going and you're gonna have a nice green growth. You're hoping those that you get immediate rain that germinates and you can keep pace with the weeds. And the great thing is about say annual rye, it's very competitive with weeds. It actually competes with weeds and helps to eliminate and smother weeds. So it's a great crop. That's why I like that really late. But regardless, if you're working earlier in the year, uh, we, we'll talk about multiple springs or whether you're tilling. Um, you just have to make sure that you eliminate that weed competition for a great plot. Number two, you can't just spray and plant. And what I mean by that is if you have that big weed bank, and I'll even include some of the, some of the quote soil builders that might have clover, sun hemp, very cereal grains, chicory, things that actually build the soil and, and talk about building the soil but you have a hard time planting into those unless you disc them up or till them up. And so for you to just go in and throw seed on the ground and spray, that works with a crop like buckwheat because you can run it over with an ATV tire and it'll smash it over, lay it on top of the seed, and you'll get good growth. But glyphosate, for example, doesn't kill clover. And so that clover can smother the growth of brassica, sod base, cereal rye, rye grass, all of those are smothering to some of these young crops that you might put in of peas or brassica during the late season. So you can't just go into a bunch of weeds, just spray and throw some seed on the ground and hope for the best. You know, in some situations, depending on your weeds, if it was really poor soil, really light weeds, you might actually get a good catch depending on what you threw on the ground. But to actually, for me to recommend something that will, that'll work for you, it's gonna be pretty difficult, probably 80% of the time, 90% of the time to get a good catch and for the time and money that you're spending, it's really not worth the effort. You can actually take some extra steps to get it done. So early to mid-August options. Let's say you're looking at early to mid-August, you want to get something in the ground. Well, at that time, if you, if you have chemically controlled area, you've tilled and eliminated weeds maybe mid-July and just haven't done anything with it yet, now I recommend getting a spraying of glyphosate if there's weeds present in that area. You've, again, you've worked that area, you have a lot of soil exposure. And at that time, you can still plant a really good blend. Like if these are new plots, then I like sometimes a mix where it might be radish, buckwheat, peas, and then a brassica blend. You can actually cut most brassica blends in half and then add that radish, buckwheat, and pea blend uh, to that mix. I call it more of a super mix. And so in a case like that, where you're not looking at brassica rotations, a first time crop, maybe one that's had weeds in it. So you've actually eliminated, you've actually have a crop of weeds and other types of forages growing in there. So that you're eliminating that brassica on top of brassica on top of brassica that you want, that you don't want to do. You're actually just mixing these seeds together and throwing it in, getting a really good green blend. And the cool thing is with something like that, when it gets later in the year, and if it's been eaten down to the ground because there's a lot of good stuff in there, like peas, buckwheat that they like earlier, early tillage radish, they might have eaten it down to the ground if it's a small plot too. You can just throw 150 pounds of rye in it per acre mid-September and enjoy the season. But that's an option at that time. What you can do is then, because grasses a lot of times are what's going to be the most competitive in something like that, and a lot of broadleafs that come in at that time might be decent actually food source. You know. A lot of broadleafs, if they're just unchecked and going into your fall, they add nothing. But young goldenrod or ragweed growing in a plot in September is gonna be eaten just like a brassica crop. Most of the time, that's not the case, so people aren't going to have that option. 
So what I like to use is to eliminate some of those grasses. You plant that plot, you know it's going to be a little weedy. A lot of those grasses are what's going to come in, those cool season grasses. So then you're using clethodim, which is a grass-specific herbicide. You're spraying that on your greens, and then you're eliminating grasses, and that's one way you can keep your weeds in check. At the same time, if you just are looking at spraying and planting, there is a way you could do that, but it's time. You can't just spray and throw the seeds down, plant that time. Let's say late July, August, you're watching this. You can go out and spray. You can spray at that time. I'd use a mix of 2,4-D, two quarts per acre, or one pint per acre of 2,4-D, and then two quarts per acre of glyphosate. You can actually mix those right together. You can go out to your favorite weed patch where you want to put a food plot and spray. You spray that, and people say, well, ounces per acre. You don't go by ounces per gallon or ounces per acre that you're applying weed killer. What you're doing instead is you're looking at those quarts, pints per acre, and then you're making sure of your actual coverage rate of your chemical that you're putting out. And what I mean by that is your tank at your speed, your driving speed with the amount of turns you have, this is how many gallons it takes to cover an acre. Once you know that, you just simply add the two quarts of glyphosate per acre, one pint of 2,4-D, you add that to that amount of gallons, and then you go ahead and spray your acre. Now for some people with really efficient spraying on a, on a UTV model, that might be closer to 10 gallons per acre of water is all it takes. Really inefficient, it might be closer to 30 gallons of water if you're using a hand pump and just a four gallon backpack sprayer, let alone a two gallon. ATV, most ATVs you can get away with about 12 and a half to 13 gallons per acre. Depends on your speed, your coverage rate, how many booms, the more booms typically, the more efficient you are. But figure out that rate first and then go spray. But once you spray that 240 and Roundup combination down, you get a really good kill. And then what I like to do is you wait about a month, wait four weeks, and then you put your seed on the ground. And then at that time, you don't spray any 2,4-D, you just spray glyphosate, two quarts per acre glyphosate. Glyphosate does not hurt the seeds. I've been doing it for 25 years. It doesn't have any negative effect. I did it all this year. All my buckwheat's out, sprayed right over after I threw the seed down, and there's no problem. So when you do that right there, you're planting more of a fall green mix when you get that in around Labor Day. And what I mean by that is you're taking out the brassica blend, just adding more of the fall green, and you still have time to put those fall greens in. The reason you're putting fall greens in, for example, what's in my own personal blend, our fall power greens is, is peas, buckwheat, and tillage radish. Now tillage radish is brassica, but it's the shortest growing brassica. It's a very short growing, some of it as low as 45 days for maturity. Buckwheat peas, really highly desirable, attractive greens at that time of the year when all the weeds are dying and it's the only green leafy mixture out there, high volume. And then you're going in about four weeks later and you're adding 150, 200 pounds of winter rye per acre. And if you wait all the way to the end of uh, September, you can even push that to more like 200, 250. And what you're doing is just trying to fill those gaps and add more volume to that field. But again, you can spray around August. You can throw your seed down around Labor Day, and then you can uh, spray with just a two quarts per acre glyphosate, and you'll get a good catch. A lot of those seeds are smaller. Buckwheat's a little smaller, peas, tillage radish, and of course any of the brassica is really small, but those are more medium-sized seeds that you can get to stick onto the soil and work through the debris at that time. If you're looking at more Labor Day planting, early, early September, you can still get away with the greens and grains. What I mean by that is, let's say you go work up the ground, that's all you had to do. You just had to work up the ground. Then you can actually work up the ground with a tractor, rent a, a tractor, and you can still put in those greens. And then you can add those cereal grains more around October 1st. That's still something, even if you want to just throw those in. And the great thing about putting those greens in at that time is you can still go in there and spray with colethodim if you want to get rid of that grass that's coming into the plot and the weeds, more like mid-September, and then you'd actually add those that base of wheat or rye more around october and uh and then you can get that really good catch now super late grains you know i talked about that in the beginning it's always your failing you know your real face fail safe crop is to add those rye or wheat crops right on top again 200 pounds per acre 300 pounds per acre if it's super late and you can get it done i always tell the story in the up in michigan this is back a long time ago probably uh 2003 2002 where I had new food plot cleared and all but the stumps. They came in, I pushed a lot of the trees over, 
dozer comes, gets in the stump. And so we finally worked it out and, and, and actually cleared that plot. And using my tractor and a front end loader um, on the tractor probably took me about a month to clear this. So we're getting to the end of September, the soil's open, put my four tons of lime per acre down, just spread it right on. People ask, can you plant lime, when you put lime down anytime? It doesn't matter, it's not gonna hurt the seeds. Put the seed down, put the fertilizer, and then we got snow that first weekend of uh, October for October 1st. It was actually opening day of bow season. Well, then it got up to 70 a week later, all that snow melted. We had about five inches of wet snow and that melting snow is what germinated the rye and ended up having a great crop. And that's in the UP of Michigan, that's really pushing it. So think about if you're in West Virginia, you know, down in that line over to Tennessee, even Oklahoma, actually starting a plot at that time is not a bad time. You just have to, again, plant more seed, 300 pounds per acre. So you're filling that space but you could actually go in those states down to middle of October, maybe even the third week of October, and still get that good green crop going into the fall. Now, if you're, again, you know, I talk about a lot of these timings. A lot of these timings are, are specific more to where I'm at in southeast Minnesota, southwest Wisconsin. And if you're down in those southern areas, you can add two, three weeks to these timetables I'm talking. And I did add some of those up already but, and then go ahead and plant. So there's always something that can be done, whether you're just going in there. Again, you know, maybe you just want to till everything up. Well, if you do, till everything up right before rain and then get your greens down heavy, more mid to late September, and they'll have a chance of fighting those weeds that are coming in, and you'll still get a good even green crop going in. Now these, these brassica blends and radish buckwheat peas, the fall blends, that's what I talk about that I, I am offering now, and uh, it's the Big Boost Brassica, the Fall Power Blend. And what you can do is actually mix those. So in a new first time plot, I call it a super plot. We're actually doing that in a couple plots here on the farm in Minnesota. Where we're cutting the uh, Big Boost Brassica in half, so a four pound bag would be good for an acre. And then we're adding two bags of the Fall Power Blend to it and putting that all together. So then you have that super blend of the radish, buckwheat, peas, and then the Brassica in there. And again, but we need to plant that more mid-August around here at the latest, if you're more southerly, more like Labor Day at the latest. And then I'm still planting in an area like that, especially small hunting plots. I'll still look at adding 150 to 200 pounds per acre four weeks after that, more like mid-September around here, third week of September. And I'll add that cereal grain of wheat or rye right over the top of it to thicken that stand. So if you're interested in those blends, just check out the website. Link is in the description. Appreciate you guys watching, but whether you plant my seeds or not, I really don't care. But the bottom line is, I appreciate you watching. I hope if you have plots to get in, make sure you control your weeds. There's a lot of options all the way, probably a lot later than you would traditionally think to get food plots in. I've used them all throughout the years. And uh, I always think it's a sin to take soil, actual soil into the winter time that's unplanted. You can always plant something there. You don't ever have to just do this, wait till spring, even up until in the case of the UP of Michigan where the snow was already flying, I still get a cr good crop when it warmed up afterwards. So it's never too late. I urge you to get your food pots in this year and do it right and, uh, and really enjoy them going into this fall and have a great hunt. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.